Hey everybody, Asher here, back with more Duelist. That's right, I told you before in the last video that this is a game that captured my interest quite a bit, and if you're not sure about the game too much, feel free to check out the first video I go over, kind of some of the basics, kind of everything that roams around here in the menu. For those of you who may have skipped it, Duelist is a happy marriage of Hearthstone and Scrolls. It's a collectible card game that's played on a board, and there's it's pretty accessible, but at the same time requires a lot of interesting thought and plays. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to go on the ranked ladder. We're going to take the same deck I used last time, the Rush-ish deck, Rush deck, because right now I'm trying to get to level 11 for the Magmar faction, which there are multiple factions to choose from. They're like classes from Hearthstone, for those of you who don't know. Trying to get this to level 11 so I can get a pack, and then we'll work from there. So let's go ahead and hit the play button. Alrighty, we're playing against the Song High today, which of course always makes me think of Civilization V, as we have a few interesting little particle effects that say, this is Beta or Amaya HD uh, 7850, which is technically not good enough for the min specs for Fallout 4, is not good enough for here either. But Primus Fist is pretty good, Dire Tide Frenzy is pretty good, don't like Animandite Claws early. I'm actually gonna, well, let's see here, the thing I don't necessarily know Okay, this is a terrible opening hand. Uh, the thing that I don't always know is like, what's my opponent going to be doing? Now, he has 33 cards, which tells me that he's playing the basic deck again, but I am playing fairly, fairly early, but he's already going to be kind of at an advantage because as many low-curve creatures as I have, he's going to be able to get something out first, unless I summon up here and up here next turn. But I also have the possibility of doing two damage. So that's a plus. Now, I do have, this is a game where, I'm just going to go over the basics again one more time. You have two generals, they each have 25 health. Uh, you get two draws per turn, maximum hand size of six. You get one mana crystal per turn, you can get temporary mana bonuses from mana springs, and sometimes it's a good idea to deny them to your opponent here, but you see this player two starts with three mana, and gets one mana spring that's closer, and gets a uh, blood shard golem, which is a basic card, which means that we're not going to really do too much to contest at this point. I'm going to ditch Trimmer for now, because sometimes there's better cards that you can get. In fact, this is fairly reasonable. Now, you can mouse over all these and see kind of what's available here. I think the plan right now is going to just be see who lives. We're going to get one extra mana crystal, and we're going to put up, uh, let's call it two chump blockers. Two little dudes. Could actually deny the second mana crystal because he didn't take it. That seems reasonable. Because these one threes, he does have something that can kill it here. Um, the big thing with uh, the Slithar is that it has rebirth, which when it dies, it drops an egg. When that egg hatches at the end of your next turn, you summon back the creature from there. So usually my eggs get destroyed right away, but sometimes if you can make it work, you can make it work really well. Now, the thing that you got to watch out for versus the song high is uh once again they're a deck that i don't really see too often i haven't had an opportunity to play with them yet but they do have these things that was actually exactly what i was going to talk about assassins they have backstab they're a little nasty in fact it may be worth a mana burn just to make it happen now, i'm curious if he's going to actually attack in and try and take out one of these guys phoenix fire hmm. well if he's going to use a the thing is is that Mana advantage and things like that are still in play. If he's going to use, and we'll look at the battle log over here, a two mana spell to take out a one mana creature that he could have just hit, uh, I'll take that as a win for me right now. So we are going to get rid of the Eludicator, and I didn't talk about my deck beforehand. That's kind of a mis miscast on my part here. But I did want to just kind of dive into the games. Now this character has Rush, but we don't want him right away. He's more of our finisher. And this is not too much better, but I can go ahead and take out a 3-mana with a 1-1, one, one, so that's pretty good. And uh, this is an aggro deck, so you do gotta uh, try and get the plays in when you can. So like, you're trading up here, this is good value, but we don't want to play the value game too much longer here. We're going to actually mana burn. I misplayed that. I should have moved up here first. Well, I couldn't have moved that far. Let's mana burn over here. Feel very southern as I'm saying all these things. Let's mana burn. Now I could have technically attacked for two. That may have been better to save that, but can you actually be hit down here? No, not right now. 
So we're going to put it where it's safe. We have no more cards that we can replace. And I'm kind of going through the motions without going through the mechanics. Got to remind myself, not even watch the video last time. You can ditch one card per turn and switch it out. It doesn't disappear forever. It goes back into your card pool. But I do have an egg. It'll hatch into a young slither at the end of my next turn. If he lets it live, he can take it out right now. But the Mantis can be real. I have a veteran slither that's coming as well. Uh, greater Fortitude can come online. I'm feeling pretty decent, but five mana, he can do a lot of things. So he's going to take out the egg, which does no damage to him. I did not actually attack him in the face, which is probably uh, probably a pretty significant issue here. So inner focus, so he's just going to go for killing this right away. I swear, these things practically have taunt on them. They have frenzy, which if you're in melee range, you simultaneously strike all other creatures around it. Uh, I do have buffs like uh, Dire Tide Frenzy that will actually add that onto there. Don't feel like I need it right now, though. Let's see if I can get something a little better. This is pretty good if I can make it work. Alright, so you're ranged right now. Let's drop you here. Now the problem with this is that there is some hard removal that this faction has. Such as just killing a creature that's right next to the general. So we've got to we've got to watch out for the fact that he probably has it in hand, considering he has four of six cards. But if he does destroy it, there is an egg that'll come up, and that can waste multiple actions. I actually kind of want animantite claws to start. I have to use face damage to possibly take some of these things out. But you can see I'm being very aggressive in my positioning. He's trying to run away. He is. I'm not sure what his plan is. If it's just to run away, I can possibly move up and make good things happen. I do have a Crimson Oculus, which is just kind of a throw-in, because I don't have... Give the minion General 3 attack this turn. Okay, so he is going to go for the kill. So he has to hit it face for 6. Oh, no. So he's using 2nd Phoenix Fire. That's a 2 for 2. And he's going to get rid of that egg as well. Now this is where this deck, it's supposed to work where I uh, have a lot of different like creatures that I can drop all at once, but I haven't been doing so well here. So you have a friendly minion one teleport to any space on the battlefield. So he's going to run him all the way over here. That's fine. This is a good mana burn target, and he's going to kill the egg again. Sadness, but what can you do? Alright, once again, it's not, it is not your time yet. This, on the other hand, is pretty damn nice. So we're going to mana burn here, because that stops the Batman. And if I... Where can you attack? Right now you cannot attack here, but I think it's better for me just to... Uh, I don't have a lot of healing right now, so we're going to do this hit here. He's going to counterattack me for two. There are counterattacks every time. And we'll put the Slither, which he can actually hit over here. We're going to put the slither... Well, I can't do too much, but put it over here. So I probably should have put it a little bit further up, but I'll see if this is a good plan or a bad plan. Nothing else to replace. Alright, here's some of our other buffing creatures, like Primordial Gazers are going to be really good if I can just get them on the board and stick. So far he's done a really good job of keeping up with his hard removal. And it looks like he has uh, something else that he can play. Because at least you can see what's going on on the battlefield. So if young flamewing flying, that's a little dangerous to say the least. Flying means that they can uh, they can't be placed anywhere. You have to place your minions next to where another minion is. But when this is an aggro deck, I've been playing the value game, and I was a little worried about that. If you can kind of stifle my early game, there's not a ton to be done about it. So this guy's going to move up here. I think that was a misplay. I think he meant to move two spaces in instead of one. By the way, you don't see a lot of chat here. You have a similar slate of emotes. don't know how you unlock some of those other emotes, but they are present. All right, is he going to buff that as well? I'm just going to have to eat it if he does. If this can stay alive, it's going to be a whole new game, though. All right, so run away. Does he have a blocker that he can put out? He has three cards, three mana, and nothing. All right. We are in business. I'm gonna... Oculus is really tempting to play. I think I'm gonna actually ditch this. Alright, that's pretty good. 
I have seven mana. So that's not the best ever. But I can get more and more aggressive with this. I can move you up here. Now creatures can attack diagonally, so we are going to have to uh, watch that in just a second. And all I want to do here for Christmas is just to see if I can actually get this guy to survive an attack. Now one thing that I've made a mistake with before, it gives nearby minions plus two plus two. So if I put it too far away from a minion, it's not going to get a buff. And then just to keep him honest, I'm going to put this fist guy and give all friendly nearby minions plus one plus one. So that's a seven, seven, and a three, two. I, I like being able to buff my own guys. I do have one more that I can possibly play. Seven, eight. So that means he has to deal with it somehow. Adamantite Claws is good. Saber Spine Tiger, which has Rush. Same idea as Charge, can move and attack immediately. Now I just gotta see, does he have the means to deal with this? He might. Could be very well surprised. Inner focus, so he's gonna fire on something. So he's gonna actually try and take this out and then take out the egg. If he does, that might be better for me. Okay, so there we go. Flying minion. And then this is not range, so he either moves his general up here and subjects himself to a lot of damage. Deal one damage to all enemy minions. Okay. That is a good move. All right, so egg down. Oh, man, it's like one of the challenges I did last night. So ghost lightning everywhere. I can get as salty as I want. He had the exact cards that he needed, but truth be told, aggro decks live and die by the amount of early pressure they can get. And I did not get a lot of pressure. All right. Crimson Oculus. Let's go ahead and get rid of the claws. This is this is a little better. I think it's more important that I do this first, though. Right. Not a valid target yet. All right, if I move you guys over here, I can move you over here. We'll go ahead and kitty cat claw for the win. Take out the ranged unit. Which is fairly important. That's the thing is that we are still in this game. There's nothing that says that we are out of it yet. Um, let's see. He only has two cards, so I feel like I have a little better card quality. I can't actually ditch this right now. Am I denying his attacks anywhere right now? We're just going to keep this close. All right, Trimmer is stuns enemy in a two by two square. Kind of the thing that a lot of people said, Quake is unbalanced in growth. And this is very much a growth style deck. I like having things that buff each other. So the Oculus doesn't seem to really be fitting, but I have my eyes on some other cards that I can put in. He only has two cards, Songhai. Not really known for their card draw, they're known for their combos. And I think right now I may be having the ability to press here because he's having to use so much of his uh, abilities and extra actions just to focus on taking out the eggs so that counts give a general three attack this turn all right and does he have something else that he can do to take this out yes he does okay so exact cards he needed to uh, tear up my hand is he going to try and press the two damage here yes he is okay so his hand is spent. I have a health advantage. Tremor is not necessary right now. Oh, Ludicator is so interesting here. Well, we can just dump our hand. I think that is worth it here. This deals four damage to me, but if I put it down here, it's more likely to actually stick. So we can put this up here. We can put you... Once again, our goal is just to try and end this game ASAP. And we're going to see if this burns me in the face. I mean, obviously it does just a little bit. But he can't kill this by itself. He's down to 8 health. And I do get claws, which is very important. And if one of my guys can stick, get this. So he's not he's only going to be able to summon his way out. He only has two cards. And this guy's going to grow every time he summons something. So Dragon Seed, teleport a friendly minion to any space on the battlefield. All right. 
I guess there's not much more to it other than just to eat it, so... Yeah, definitely well played. I didn't play that perfectly by any stretch, but... We'll just go ahead and end it now. Prefer to go exactly lethal when I can. Yeah, that was a good, entertaining match. And one of the things that I like to do, especially when I have entertaining matches, I know I need the gold, but I'm definitely going to add... And, oh no! I was going to actually tip him as well. That's some feedback I'm going to send right now. And that's unfortunate. Uh, can't tip after adding friend. Sad face. Because you can tip five gold for an especially uh, good game. Oh, whoops. Well, we'll add that in a little bit off camera. Let's see. I can just do it now. Can't tip after adding friend. Sad face. Uh, next. Skip and send your message. There we go. All right, and actually every single bug report and anything I've sent in has gotten an immediate response, so that's pretty awesome. But three wins in a row, plus one progress bonus. I'm now Silver League, which they do have rank ladder rewards, once again, kind of similar to Hearthstone. And if you uh, get high enough, certain things that happen. So achievement complete, welcome to the Silver Division. And you get a Spirit Orb for doing that. So let's go ahead and bust it open, because that's fun. We like seeing what cards you get all the time so once again this little card opening sequence there's always at least a rare and actually this is more unlike the demo video that I did yesterday this one's a little bit more akin like I said I usually get um, multiple rares or a rare and an epic there's a one in five chance per spirit order to get a legendary which is exciting legendaries only cost uh, instead of, there's spirit instead of dust functions the same way there's no card trading legendaries cost 900 spirit to craft instead of 1600 but decks can run up to three of them so take that for what you will. Anyway, a Prismatic Illusionist. Summon a 2-1 Illusion on any random nearby space. Whenever you cast a spell, that's interesting. Dune Caster. I've seen these in uh, some challenges. Uh, buffing Dervishes and keeping them on the field is kind of a key concept. Fire Blazer. Provoke 5-5 five, five for 5. Interesting. Uh, Whenever this minion deals damage, restore two health to your general. Healing is actually very important in this game compared to both Hearthstone and Scrolls. So we'll uh, talk about that maybe in a little bit. As you saw there, my deck, my aggro deck is more trying just to rush people down. But give friendly minion plus two attack, and this minion takes no damage this turn. I think this is the second Boundless Courage that I've gotten. So kind of like commanding shout there. But yeah, people are generally very, very friendly. Uh, for what's going on in this game. But let's go ahead and play another one. So if we can see if we can get some more action. But like I said, Duelist, it's fun. It's it's like it's accessible like Hearthstone, but it takes a lot of the good stuff of scrolls too. I love being able to play on a battlefield and the art looks fantastic. It's open beta by the way, so you can check it out. It's uh, free to play, all that. So let's dive into another game. Okay, so we are playing against I always forget the Van R faction. I forget how to pronounce their name. But I do have a much better opening. I'm going to ditch Tremor, because Tremor doesn't do as necessarily as great against the this opponent. They tend to play a lot of Provoke or Taunt minions. And I am trying to talk through all the buffs and everything that goes on here. I do take a little bit more time in my first video that I did this. I'm going to try and do a better job of talking about it here. Now, I've gone first a lot, but I think this game does an interesting uh, nod to trying to take care of the first advantage. I start with two mana crystals. The opponent starts with three. There are three mana springs. Those are temporary mana buffs. They get one that they can access the first turn. So I can do a two cost thing, which is exactly what I'm going to do, because this is probably my favorite turn one play that I can get going first. But he can run four mana of something. I am actually... I'm inclined to keep both these cards. I'm not going to drop them into the replacement bucket. So let's just go ahead and say hello. Good luck. Have fun. Not okay, so see right away we get provoke and we get zeal. Now, zeal is very interesting to me because it really harkens back to uh order decks and what that means with uh, let's see, can I actually do this? No, I can't. Hmm, I can almost kill all these things. Well, wait, I can, I can totally clear his board right now. So he got the mana crystal there. He did drop two. I only have three mana. But if I move this up here, and this is what I'm talking about with knowing your buffs. Now, I'm provoked. I can only attack this right now. But if I put the little fist guy up here, this is good. Three attack. 
Dire Tide Frenzy. Four attack, that's plus one attack. And I have Frenzy, so if I attack down here with you, you'll notice that this kills the Batman. Now I'm going to take three face damage for doing this because he does have Zeal. Zeal is when you get an effect when you're near your general. But I'm going to have to do it sometime, and if I can kill it without equipping Adamantite Claws, that's great. So now I have an egg, which he can take out, but that's going to put him in the position that I want him to be in. Two Claws is probably more than necessary. But these eggs have like such huge like taunt here because, once again, if you let him live, it just becomes the creature again. So you have to deal with it. It forces your opponent into suboptimal plays. We'll see how suboptimal this turns into, though, because, uh, yeah, four mana. Oh, did not actually cast anything. Fascinating. Okay, um, I guess in that case, we are just going to, uh, drop this. As fun as it would be to drop Animantite Claws. Yeah, it's probably better if, since he's not going for that crystal. I don't have any great plays. Let's see if we can get a different card. Gives us more options. Not really. Let's see if we can try and deny the board here a little more. Boxing him in like this means that he has to move up if he's going to go out. Or he's going to have to clear something. Now I don't have any infiltrate minions. Infiltrate is an ability where you get a buff if you're on the other side of the battlefield. So I don't have any of that. Magmar is not really known for that. But him having to skip a turn is so huge, so Martyrdom, destroy any minion, restore that health to the general. Actually, really nice card. Is that just a common? That's what I want to know. Alright, to its general. Okay. So he did that as a hard removal, and I got no benefit from the heal. So he's having to use all of his hard removal. He gets rid of another egg. So we can... I don't need to use Adamantite yet. So we are actually going to disengage here just a little bit. Let's get rid of one of the Primus Fists. And got a Piercing Mantis, which is probably better in this situation. So let's go down here. And let's kill you. So he can still actually move down to an attack diagonally. I know I haven't featured that as much. So we're going to drop the Slither here. And we're going to drop the Piercing Mantis over here. Because that way he can't actually attack it with just his face so this guy once again rebirth pretty powerful mechanic i actually have not in a single game yet had an egg pop off but that's i think part of it is just because of the style of this deck so war surge all friendly minions plus one plus one okay so that's that's your bigger creature that is actually that's actually okay as fun as it would be to drop adamantite claws and i do have six mana All right, let's see if we can get cute here. Oh, we got cute! Oh, that's beautiful. All right. This guy is going to sacrifice his life for ire. But he's going to do... Uh... Well, he can do a lot of damage. And uh, if I can just preserve my general's health, that's going to be really key here. So let's go ahead and move you up here. The reason I'm moving him up here... Probably not a great reason to move him up there. Now, I can attempt a body block, and we can chump block with this, but let's go ahead and drop the Frenzy, because this is not a 1-1 buff. All right, so this is a little too much damage. And I could have used the claws here, but we'll see if we can make him make a choice let's see here see if we can preserve the egg this time so he's got to make a choice what does he want to try and go for can he go for any of them I actually roped into the end of that turn trimmer much more important in this matchup because you can stun enemies which makes them skip a turn uh trimmer's probably a replaceable card in the aggro style deck but he's down to 15 health and I haven't even gotten out the claws yet these are artifacts Artifacts have three durability. Does he actually have a rush minion to take this out? I don't know. Or is he just... Oh, there we go. This is exactly why we have Trimmer. All right, so this guy is going to come back. And how do we want to do this? Hmm. 
I have seven mana. So we're definitely tremoring. And we're going to use the Primus Fist appropriately. As fun as it would be to use it right here. Alright, now I've got to be very careful with this because I can give this guy okay so he's not gonna have frenzy when he goes into attack that's all right I'm gonna give the little guy a bonus and give all y'all a bonus even the egg has a bonus can the egg actually attack yes it can that is so cute we're gonna trim her here so that guy is now officially stunned And I'm in a pretty good place on health. And I didn't even need to use the claws. And this guy survives one more turn. At the very least. And this hatches back into a 4-5. So actually that little chump blocker saving the day. And the storm metal golem stunned. Which is why I really like Tremor. Um, let's see. Does he have... Okay, that's good. Silver Knight golem with the provoke. Does he have anything else that he can summon that can save him? Because right now, a Blood Moss Golem. Right now I can deal with a lot of this, but I can't deal with all of it. Okay. Let's ditch you. Sometimes you can draw into a win. This is not one of those times. Now, if I just face this, I am going to take 12 and plus damage. But I can actually take this out. So let's take out the... Uh, let's, let's go ahead and equip the claws. Let's go ahead and uh, we don't have much else to do but to summon you. Let's go ahead and knock you out. I want to be super aggro brothers, but that doesn't seem to be the uh, case today. All right, so we'll put you up here. We'll put you over here. So he's not going to be able to push nearly as much damage on me now. And I still have the Dispel if it comes down to it. So lots of control here. Greater Fortitude, a card I kind of wanted before. Primus Fist can be very powerful here. And if he walks into this, he's walking into a Death Trap. Now once again, Animantite Claws has three durability. If he can get two hits on me, I lose it. But I get a counterattack for six damage. So, as great as it would be to technically, like, have gone for some wombo combo, I did need to clear the space around him. Right now, he's, like, really, really cornered. So, martyrdom, destroy me, and restore that health to general. And so he's giving me one health. He could have destroyed his own guy. And second hailstone golem. All right. And he's going to heal up as well. Oh no, he's going to heal up that guy. Interesting. Okay, not a lot to dispel here. And unfortunately, once again, it doesn't appear that I'm in a really good position to just try and end the game. Unless I can draw into it here, which I did not. All right, well, we're going to just do it like this, then. We can give ourselves three attack. Might as well drop you back here. Primus Fist, one attack for everybody. Okay, so six attack there, six four, six nine. It doesn't make a huge difference. So there's that Frenzy down. Four, three. I guess we'll just go for the board clear. 
There's so many wind conditions that I can draw into right now. Okay, so General. He's at 3 health, and he's cornered. I'm at 14 health. And I got a winner here if he can't get me down, if he can't deal 10 damage to me this turn. So these guys are big finishers, and there's the concession. So good game there once again. As like I said, that's, that's aggro really trying to control the board, and this time I am going to actually tip. And tip of your own gold message only appears once, so there we go. I, like I said, it's really nice that you can tip your uh, opponents and just give them some gold from time to time. Closest thing you can get to training, but I am level 9 with the Magmar now, and I do get 4 wins a row, so 1 progress bonus up to rank 19. Now, because there is no unranked plays, we get our first win gold bonus, we get our 2 win gold bonus. Because there is no uh, unranked play, I do have when I do have a quest for something, like uh, Lion or Challenge, uh, play 4 games online with the Lion or Squad, I have to do that in ranked, or I can do it among friends and just concede 5 times. But that uh, 2 win 15 gold bonus you can get infinitely. You're not just capped at 100 like in Hearthstone. So if I really wanted to grind out some gold, I can get it that way. But I think that's a, enough to kind of give you an idea for now. We'll be playing this some more in the days to come. Uh, this is Asher with Duelist. It's fun. Check it out. It's free to play. You can download it. You can even play it in your browser. How cool is that? Like I said, it takes a lot of the good from Hearthstone. takes a lot of the good from Scrolls. And so far, people have been exceptionally friendly and helpful. I hope that's something that continues in the future. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you all next time.